We started with, um, for instance, the, the three, four, and the hi hat. And then I added a backbeat that is not necessarily on the two or the three of the three, four, but it's leaning more in the um, in the six, eight feeling of it. And then I used the bass drum to kind of accent the bass part that Daryl Jones was playing or the uh, vocal kind of, and it would be. Now, when we, when we opened up the song, when, it start, when the solo sections came up, and I would um, try to keep the same bass going, but give it the more rock and roll power, okay? So, for instance, uh... Okay, so you've got your rhythm. Let's look at the bass line. The bass is in a unique position because it has to follow the drum part, very often the bass drum, and at the same time, the chord and sequence based riffs of the other instruments. Now, whatever the style of music, there are one or two rules of thumb that you should bear in mind. At its simplest, a bass line should simply follow the root notes of each chord, as in this next example of D minor, C and G. You don't have to stick to the root notes. You could try adding the fifth, an octave of each chord. You could miss out the root note altogether and substitute the third, or use notes from the key scale of the song to build up a melody. With the advent of synthesizers, keyboard players have found it possible to record bass lines that went down to low E flats, even down to low Cs. In fact, synth bass lines have now become a fact of life on most modern records, hence the development of this instrument, the five string bass, with a low string that goes down to a B. It's quite thick and flexible at the same time, and the neck has to be strengthened and has to be slightly wider to accommodate the extra tension and string spacing. In the pickups, it has to have active circuitry to hone in on those low bass frequencies. As with all new toys, it's very tempting to overdo it with those low notes, so exercise a little bit of taste. Apart from that, it's great fun to play because you can do all the modern techniques. Now, we've been looking at songs that have verses, choruses, middle eights, and lots of chord changes. But sometimes songs are built around just one chord or maybe just one riff. Now, the riff can go through the whole song or can just be played in one section, acting a little bit like the hook that a chorus usually is. Now, central riffs are common in music from disco to heavy metal, but they're often played on the guitar. Have a listen to this next example. <laughs> Keyboards can help build the texture of your song by maybe adding a new part when you return to a verse or chorus. A familiar basic keyboard part is a wash of sustained chords, sometimes known as a pad or carpet. These state the chord sequence softly in the background and leaves other instruments like maybe the guitar to do things like play single line riffs, like here. Or 
we can bring in the pad later. This thickens the chords in the same way that strings are often used to do, like maybe in the second verse. So start with piano. And later add your strings. Keyboards can also highlight or counterpoint the vocal melody. We talked about this to Steel Pulse keyboard player Selwyn Brown. It's like we might, uh, we might have like a, a basic arrangement. You know, it, it could be um, say four chords. You know, you know, and we sort of uh, uh, we sort of make that run for a while, and it's like um, uh, we sort of uh, play uh, around the scale first and then uh, uh, try and create a feel from that. And we sort of, sort of listen to the vocals a lot as well, you know? And you find that in a lot of reggae songs, say, say the vocal is... Um, <laughs> something similar to it, you know? And then always referring back to, like, the vocal lines so that no matter how many horn lines you fit in, it will still relate back. Once you've written your song, you'll find that the mood of the song is often reflected in the key you've chosen. Major keys are usually associated with happy and bright feelings, whereas minor keys have a sad, moodier sound, as we found when we talked to Tony Banks of Genesis and Ultravox frontman Midge Year. There's something about playing a, a minor uh, chord sequence that is very sort of it's evocative, it's very, um, something a bit passionate about it, um, as well as being a bit miserable, because we're such a miserable band at times. We write the, we write the most miserable songs about people dying and all sorts. And, and, uh, and minor keys tend to do that. I mean, there's the, the, the such, such nice things you can do with it. You know, really nice notes you can put together. I mean, They're just nice, nice picky notes that you can't really do on majors. Majors always sound so happy and up, and if you want to write a miserable song, pick a minor. Typical example from the early days was uh, the section from Supper's Radio, which we called Apocalypse in 9-8, for lack of a better title. Um, and, you know, that keeps just one guitar riff going all the way through, which was just this. Now, what was fun with that with me, it was the first time I really tried it, was just trying any chords with that that sound Good, you know, you can either, if you play an E major without it, you go. It's a very happy little thing, but if you play these chords, it, it has a more dramatic sort of feel, you know, and you, which is how we did it really, just sort of built it up so that built up, in fact, of the dramatic chords and brought the vocals back in when it got to the most dramatic chord in the thing, and then it just, the whole thing sort of took off, I think, and it was a real peak of the song, a very important sort of feature. It's, it's just quite fun how you can change the character, I think, of a note. 